Hello, hello. Come on in. How's everyone doing? We are ready to start our last virtual class of 2021. Um, I hope you're all having a wonderful day, ready to get crafting along with us. Thanks for tuning in live to everyone who's tuning in live right now. Love being able to hang out with you guys and craft together. Um, I have Corey in the producer's booth today. Um, so if you have any questions that I don't get to or having any troubles, um, he, he's there to answer your questions as well. So go ahead and say hi in the chat box and let us all know that you're here. Um, it's very cool getting to see, you know, we've got a really good group, a lot of familiar names. Uh, hopping on. Hi, Carol. Hello. Hi, Anna. <laughs> hello. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Um, so I'm so excited for these cards. We have like, what? What's today? Is it 10 days, nine days until Christmas? Um, so we're going in big with Christmassy gold and red and green cards today. Uh, we're doing something a little different than our normal card shapes. So we're going to be using um, one of the Studio Light Essentials dies to make our little building block card. Uh, if you're here, you probably already know that, <laughs> but maybe you don't. And then um, for our poinsettia card, we're going to be doing this one from scratch. So uh, if you are crafting along, I'm going to try and go slow so we can get the measurements and everything like that. Uh, so we're going to take our time on this one. We'll do this one second. Um, but if you're watching along afterwards, I'm thinking I'm going to put up a blog post um, with just the written measurements as well after we're done class uh, for when I post the recording. So if you're watching the recording later on in the future, <laughs> um, you can get the uh, measurements too to kind of go along with. But we'll take our time. It's going to be fun. We're going to be able to make a little sidestep card without any dies at all. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that one. So let me know if you're crafting along with us today. Uh, I love it. I love it. Glad you're here. Okay, enough blathering on. Why don't I flip us over and we can start off on our first building block card. Okay, so this one is, if you have all the bits and pieces, it's honestly fairly, it's straightforward. And I love the Studio Light shape dies. They have a whole bunch of them, the uh, essential shape dies. There's all kinds of different shapes and everything, all tons of fun. But I feel like they go unnoticed because from the front, you're like, well, what the heck is all of this going to do? It's not until you really take a closer look at some of the other images. If you're looking on the website or if you're looking in person, you know, we have the, uh, the back of the die and on the website there's always lots of samples and everything too. So I think once we get a feel for building this one and I love how um, small it folds up to be uh, under five by five, four and three quarters by four and three quarters. Um, so it's a nice little one and um, it's really quite cute. So all we have to do is grab our shape die and a nice pad of paper and we are off to the races. So I'm going to start out with this outer frame. This is kind of like our card base, the, the largest outer frame. Um, and we're going to cut this out of white cardstock. So I'm just going to run that. We're going to run that through our die cutting machine. Oh, the measurements of the card. The building block card, sure. Um, I guess we're cutting the card base to four and three quarters by, what is that? Seven and seven eighths is what the, the card base is going to be. I 
don't have, I mean, I don't have the measurements for, um, you know, where you're going to cut and score and everything because the die does that all for us on this one. The side step card is the one that we're going to do from scratch. Uh, so we have all the measurements and everything for that. Okay. So we're going to just pop this on a sheet of paper and cut it out to create our card base. So, perfect. Now, super duper handy, right? The card base already cuts and scores where we need to fold. So we can already start off here. I'll keep the finished one kind of in the side. So we see how it's kind of going to uh, collapse. To make sure we've got the right side going. So we're gonna have the longer section up at the top. I mean, you could do it any way you want it, I suppose. But for today, this is the shape I'm going with. So we're going to fold it up and up and up on the first little step where it's already scored. And then we're going to fold back and back and back. And you'll see the first couple little folds are like uh, a little wonky, but then it, you see it take shape. So again, we take it from flat and on the first score lines that we see here, here, and here, we fold up, 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 and then we fold back, 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 giving us a little zigzag. Hi, Cheryl, thanks for joining. So we're just getting started on our card base using the Studio Light Essentials die. So I'm just gonna take my uh, scoring tool and just crease those folds so that we get a nice sturdy one. Okay, so we've got our card base. Easy peasy with the die. So I don't lose any of my pieces. I better stick that back on there. And now we're going to cut out our um, large square backgrounds. So out of gold mirror cardstock, I'm going to be cutting the largest outer frame of the squares. So we had their like full card base. And then from our large squares, I'm going to take the outer square. I'm going to take both outer squares. They're both the same, but it's handy that you can do two at once, right? And I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine with a piece of gold mirror. Gold mirror. -y. This is the hunky dory gold mirror. -y. Who's crafting along with us live? Maybe you're, you're busy cutting. <laughs> I'm spoiled by my uh, Go Power and Emboss machine. I can just stick it through and, and keep going with that electric machine. Okay. So we've got our two pieces of gold mirror cardstock. And again, I'm just gonna put my dies back so that I don't lose them because I will misplace them. There's a lot of bits and pieces to this set, which is nice. Okay, now with either um, 
with either tape or glue, we can add on our first gold squares. So really all this card is, is just die cutting different sized squares <laughs> and layering, but it's, it's the, um, it's how you make it your own that makes it beautiful, right? It's the little touch of the mirror cardstock and the beautiful paper pad uh, from Paper Boutique that we're gonna be using that, that um, brings it to life and makes it something really special. Okay. So with the gold mirror squares, I'm going to be popping them on. I'll do the front one first. So it's just going to fit in this square that is cut out. Now I want to make sure I'm leaving an even amount of space around the edge. It's about um, an eighth of an inch on all of the sides. So if you line it up with the outer sides properly, um, that's a pretty good indicator that your spacing on the inside is going to be correct. So we have the little white edge border that we can see going all the way around. And then we'll do it with the kind of inner corner. Again, place it in there as evenly as possible. There we go, starting to come to life. Okay, now let's go with our smaller squares. I'm going to cut four out of um, gold mirror cardstock to give us a variety of um, like a little hint of the gold throughout. I'm not going to do it on all of the squares, but I'm going to do it on four. You do whatever you want, but I like it on four. So I'm just going to pull up from the smaller squares. I'm going to pull up four of the outer frames. Maybe that's really taped down there. <laughs> okay. And then from here. And I'm going to cut that four squares out of our gold mirror card stack. Okay, so we've got our four squares. Can I'll keep these out because I can use the same size. They're all all the squares are the same size. Um, okay, so now we will tape or glue these guys on. They're smaller, I'm only doing tape on two sides instead of all four, like the larger square. Is everybody keeping up so far? Okay, and then I'm going to place them. It doesn't matter, you can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna place mine kind of like going through the center in the squares. Right, Hannah? I know the die, Hannah says she loves it. We're letting the die do all of the work and you're absolutely right. 
This one is a breeze to do. You better buckle in for our second project that we're, <laughs> we're doing from scratch. This is a, this one's a warm up. And I mean, if, if you like this kind of thing, absolutely check out the rest of our shape dies because there's some really cool ones. Actually, I think I have some on my desk. I can show you some of the other ones. I'll show you some of them afterwards. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to, we have one, two, three more backgrounds to fill. So I'm going to cut three of the, um, you know, the larger small squares out of the, uh, out of a sheet from our classic Christmas pad, uh, the decorative papers from Paper Boutique. I've already used this one a bunch. I love the colors. And uh, like I'm doing mine in red, but you could absolutely, or no, I'm doing mine in green. My goodness. Jeez. You could absolutely do it in the red, right? It's the same patterns with um, the red. The only thing that's going to change is when we do our deer, you'll see there's not a red option but the red and the green would look really lovely too so you do you so we're going to use the where did it go the star paper there we go this sheet to cut out three of the larger small squares to finish off our backgrounds Okay, so again, we'll pop them on. And it's just gonna give us that dark border. So we'll pop them on the remaining spaces. and get it as level as you can. <laughs> Come on. Is everyone all set for Christmas? Done your, maybe just finishing up your card making with this session? gift shopping. I'm finishing off my, my shopping tonight. And then of course I'll get groceries this weekend for a meal. Okay. So we've got our backgrounds. <laughs> nope. Corey, Corey's in the producer booth saying, nope, he's not, he's not ready for Christmas. <laughs> oh, Corey. Okay. Um, so now we're going to take that same star paper, same stars that we did the backgrounds out of and use, we're gonna start filling in our little squares. So we're gonna use um, two of the smaller squares to cut out the star paper. So that's what I'm doing. Again, you can see we're gonna use all different kinds of things. So do whatever little bits and pieces from whatever paper pad you're using. Do whatever you want. 
Just make sure it is the inner squares, the inner small squares. Let me put the frames back. There's the outside. Okay. And we've got them. Let's tack those down and layer them on top of some of the gold. Again, making sure that border is even all the way around. Brenda says she's almost ready for the holidays. Oh, and upcoming birthdays. Oh my goodness. Christmas Eve and Christmas Day birthdays. Wowzers, you're going to be busy. Yes, I hear you. A little, a little, a uh, couple days off for a holiday. That's what Brenda's most excited for. I hear you on that one. Spend some time with some family friends. Okay. So we've got our stars on there. Now, this is kind of, I, I like this part. It's, it seems fun. It's fun to me. Um, and we're just going to pick out the other patterns that we want to fill in our other squares. Now, because we've used a dark uh, background on for the stars, right? I'm going to pick a uh, a lighter paper so that it kind of contrasts against the dark background. So I'm going to pick a lighter design. So we're going to go with the, the uh, text here. Brenda, 75 years young on Christmas Day. Is that your birthday on Christmas Day? Yes. Anna says she's just about ready for Christmas. Or mailing out the rest of her cards on Saturday. And you're making ornaments too. Wow, Anna, good for you. Okay, so we're cutting out just out of the corner here, I'm going to cut out two of our small inner squares and try and because because the um, the writing is horizontal, try and make sure you've got your squares lined up so that your writing isn't totally wonky. Oh, but unless you wanted to do it like you could have it going on, on like a diagonal, like a purposeful diagonal. <laughs> that could be kind of cool, too. We're gonna run this through. Stick them on. I like it, Karen. Uh, Karen says she's definitely not ready, but she always manages to get ready by Christmas Eve. That's, I'm the same. I'm usually, I always have some last minute stuff. Like I'm the most ahead of the game I've ever been this year. <laughs> and I'm going out the week before. So I like to get fully in the Christmas spirit. 
before I start my holiday shopping. Okay, so we've got that tacked on there and then I'm gonna pop it in the center too. Pop one of the, the letter ones in the center. It's coming together. All right, now let's put uh, some of the ornaments. Let's cut the ornaments out. So from that same paper pad, the Paper Boutique Shades of Classic Christmas Decorative Papers. Find where there we go. Ornaments. Oh, I've already cut that one. I better use that one. Okay. So I'm going to just choose two ornaments. Now, I have stuck with the like dark green for mine instead of going to the light green, but want. Is that Karen? Is that Karen Graton that's just commented? Because if so, Karen has helped me complete some of my Christmas shopping. She hand carved a lovely cardinal for me that I'm gifting to my grand, one of my grandmothers. And it is just so, so lovely. It's a work of art. So if you're friends with Karen on Facebook, check out her hand carved, um, I guess, I guess ornaments or decorations. What would you call them, Karen? It's so adorable and has really put me in the Christmas spirit. Okay, so we've cut out our little ornaments for our interior pieces. Brenda, the birthday boy is your uncle. Well, happy birthday to him. That's, that's quite a birthday. Okay, so we're gonna stick our ornaments on there. And I like these squares fit so perfectly with the different shapes and everything from this paper pad. Perfect size. Just pop them on there. And we have one more small square to fill. And let's fill it with one of the snowflakes from the paper pads. That's what I'm doing. But again, do whatever you want. I thought I had one used. I don't know. There we go. And again, the perfect little size, these snowflakes. Just pick one and cut it out. Run that through the machine. Sometimes, um, especially when you're trying to get very specific with where you are um, cutting from, I like to use to make sure it stays because by the time I take that over to my die cutting machine, it may have shifted around a little bit. I use, uh, we have low tack tape from Happy Doodle. It comes with a dispenser, but you know, I've long lost that. <laughs> uh, 
So I'll just toss my low tack tape on there and just hold my die in place to make sure it doesn't shift around as I'm cutting it out. I just find it handy when I'm trying to do something specific. Wonderful. And we just pop our snowflake on there. There we go. So we've got our little squares done. Now it's time for our big boys. So we could absolutely just stick with the paper pad that we've been using and just cut, you know, um, what would be a nice one? I mean, any of them would be nice. But the, uh, where's the one I'm thinking about? The deer, oh, here. Right, if you didn't, if you don't have the other project pad, you could use any um, of the paper from the pad to put in our larger squares. But I really, really love this deer and the trees, the kind of fading out trees. So this is from the same um, collection, the Shades of Classic Christmas, the project pad. So coordinating perfectly with the, um, the decorative papers that we just used, right? We see all different kinds of bits and pieces and cutouts. that we can cut out and use. But specifically for this one, we're gonna take this deer background and cut bits and pieces out of it. I love, there's like the to and from, mom, dad, brother, sister, grandma, granddad. So if you're going with a red scheme, here's a lovely one that we could use. With the nice kind of text in the background and then the snowflakes. If you needed like a focal point. There we go. So we're going to cut from that guy. So I'm taking the interior die from our large squares. And again, using that low tack tape. I'm gonna make sure it frames my deer down here. Make sure one of them frames the deer and I'll have the other one. Again, make sure it's lined up straight and have the other one frame just a section of our trees. And I'll run that through my machine. Back. And you can reuse your low tack tape too for a couple times before it gets, you know, too unsticky. All right, now before we tack these down onto our, before we tack these down onto our card base, we're going to we're going to stamp on our kind of faded trees. So I'm going to use the sentiment stamp that we have for our next card from the stamp that we have for our next card. So we're gonna be using the little season's greetings stamp from our Couture Creations poinsettia greetings stamp. 
So I'm going to steal the season's greetings. And I love that they put it, um, it's two separate words. So of course we can have it in a straight line if we wanted it, we can have it right underneath one another. But for this one, I'm going to just stagger it a little like this. It's a nice size too. Season's greetings. Lined up, make sure they're straight. And I'm going to stamp with the uh, rainforest color from the VersaFine Claire inks. It, the green matches up perfectly. It's a nice dark forest green. So just tap that on. Stamp, there we go. So we'll let that dry a little and I will clean my sentiment stamp off a little bit. Stick it back with my poinsettia. So we're ready to rock for our next card. All right. Now we can attach our last large panels onto this card. So we're not using, I'm not using any foam pads or anything, but because it's a shape die, it has um, given us so much dimension, even though we're just attaching everything flat to our card. Great. Right. Pop that on there. Lovely, cute building block card. Okay, now to just finish it off, we're going to tie in to those stars on our paper pad with the Paper Boutique Under the Mistletoe um, star sequence. Just to add that extra little bit, just gonna pull a couple out. And I'm just going to attach them with some glue. I really love the uh, Helmar premium craft glue for this one. It's kind of like, um, it, the way it works reminds me of a hot glue gun, only without the heat. So I find it handy. If I can get it to come out. Dries clear. I'm just gonna put them on the corner of the card there. In threes, so I find that works well. <laughs> Isn't that the design rule of threes is a thing? So I'll put three here. Uh, then we're gonna throw, <laughs> throw all the rule of threes out the window and I'm gonna put one over here. <laughs> Just 
a little dab, just a dab will do you, and stick one on over there. Love it. So it just adds a little bit of dimension. I like these sequins because they um, they are scored, so they pop up a bit on the points, which is nice. So there we go. Very cute little building block card. Nothing to it. And this is a die that can be used with any paper pad. If you have papers that you want to use up, which I get that comment a lot in the store, um, people have lots of paper. Because I mean, how can you say no to a cute paper pad? You can't, or at least I can't. <laughs> Um, so we always end up with, you know, bits and pieces of paper. And this is a good way to just use up those, even your like scrap stash uh, to make a little kind of quilt of a card, right? Okay. I hope you enjoyed that one. Easy peasy. And I think we are ready to move on to the next one. I don't think we'll have a break for this one. We might take a break a little later on and see how long the next one takes. Because remember, we're making it from scratch. So everybody buckle up. Let me clean up my pieces a bit. Tidy up a little. So we're actually not using any dies for this card. Um, let's do a draw now. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do the draw for a $10 gift card for ecstasy crafts. For all of those of you tuning in live, we thank you so much because we love hanging out and crafting. Corey's going to put the, get the uh, random name drawn. For us, and our winner is <gasps> drum roll, please, Charlene. Charlene, thank you so much. Congratulations! Um, you win the ten dollar gift card to Ecstasy Crafts. Um, Shoot us a private message, Charlene, because we don't even have your we, need your, your, we need your information so that we can issue, issue it to you. So congrats, Charlene. There you go. What are you, what are you gonna get with the 10 dollars Craft clip. <laughs> okay, so now, I better pull up my measurements. You're so welcome, Charlene. Okay, make sure you message Ecstasy Crafts in the chat. Send us a private message or message us on Facebook or whatever. Just get a hold of us um, so that we can give it to you. Okay, so we are going to start off for this lovely sidestep card. We are going to start off with a plain piece of white cardstock. You guys know I'm using my EC card 25, our premium one cardstock. Um, but anyway, cardstock will do the trick. So we're going to trim our white cardstock to seven by 10. So it's a seven by five by seven card, um, but we're going to go 10. Seven. Okay. Now I'm going to take my ruler and a pencil and along. It's it might help with the visual if we flatten our card out. So we're going to 
measure from the left side. Three inches. Kind of like through the middle. And from the side, three inches again. So along those two marks, those two marks at three inches from the left side, I'm just gonna draw a really light pencil mark all the way down. That's gonna be kind of where this cut is going to go, but we got some scoring to do first. So we're going to go, we're gonna score all the way through at five inches because that's the like full fold in our five by seven card. We're gonna score all the way through that pencil line all the way through our card. We're not gonna fold it yet. So we've just created our five by seven card. Score it all the way through. Everybody with me so far? I hope I'm gonna give you a second to do it. You want a repeat? No problem. Okay, so we've trimmed our paper, our cardstock, to 10 inches by 7 inches. And then we've marked our light drawn pencil line. It's three inches in from the side. So we marked three inches and three inches, and then we connect them and draw them up. Then we're going with our scoreboard and we've scored it at five inches. So that's making our five by seven card. Now, just to this line, this pencil line that we've drawn, we're going to score at two and a half inches. Just take it to that pencil line. Okay. At two and a half inches. So, so far we've scored all the way across at five inches and to our pencil line at two and a half inches. Good. Then if you only have a small scoreboard, you're gonna wanna fold up here to make your, so that you can line it up because we're gonna score the rest of this. If you have a large scoreboard, like me, I know a lot of you do have the 12 by 12 scoreboards, we can leave it flat. So again, so far we've scored at five inches all the way down and two and a half inches just to our pencil line. Now, next we're going to score at six and a half inches down to our pencil line. Okay, that's six and a half just to the pencil line. The hunky dory scoreboard is the best. Right, Brenda? <laughs> I love it. Okay, so two and a half, five, six and a half. Then we're going to score again at eight to our pencil line. And then we're going to score again at nine to our pencil line. Okay. 
So we've got two and a half, five, all the way down, six and a half, eight, and nine. Now, if you only have a short board, like this nailing one, we've scored it at five, we've scored it at two and a half, and we can fold it up and then shove that half, that fold at the five inch mark into the edge of your scoreboard. And then we're going to score at one and a half to the pencil line, three to the pencil line, and four. So again, from that kind of halfway mark, we're at one and a half, three, and four. I hope that helps. I hope that covers it for everybody. Okay. Now, we're going to take a craft knife and very carefully cut along our pencil line between our two and a half inch score mark and our nine inch score mark. So in between, we're gonna cut right through the kind of the center of our card along that pencil line. Let me see. So at this point, we can just erase that pencil mark. And ta da, we have our card base. We have our card base. Is everybody with me? I hope. So we've just cut between the two and a half inch score line and the nine inch score line, the, bare, the end ones, basically. Okay, now we're gonna fold this puppy up. So on our center fold, we're gonna fold it like a regular card. Just get the folds started. If you get them started and then they'll kind of all come together and we can like crease the folds at the end. Then we're gonna go from our, this is kind of like our front, this skinny little panel is our front panel. We're gonna fold back. And then at the next score line, we're gonna fold up. Again, just get them started. So we're folding back and then up and then back and up and back. So back, up, back, up, back. Oh, guys, I was nervous. I, <laughs> I was nervous it wasn't gonna come together. Look at that. Now we can take our tool and crease those folds, make it nice and tight. Is everybody good? So we went back and up and back and up, and back and up to give us a little zigzag for our sidestep card. You can do it. There. Not that bad. I mean, the die, sure, the die is a lot easier. <laughs> but it's fun to be able to make different shapes and everything ourselves. Or it's fun for me anyways. <laughs> okay. So now we're taking a sheet from our 
decorative decorative papers pad and we're with the the stars and we're going to trim it up to kind of fill in our panels we're going to fill it here and across there and there and there so our first panel we'll do the the largest one is going to be two and seven eighths two and seven eighths by four and seven eighths two and seven eighths by four and seven eighths two and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. We can attach that. Again, our front panel is two and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And I'm gonna pop that on with some double sided tape. So we're going to have a skinny white border around um, around this panel, around our outside edge. So because it's skinny, there's not a lot of room for error. So I'm using double-sided tape. Glue is nice because it gives you that wiggle room. Um, but if you're using the double-sided tape, do the little like butterfly tab trick so that you can make sure you get it lined up properly before it's really stuck down there. So just peel the ends of your tape your double sided tape up. And once you have it lined up, then you can tack those corners down and peel the rest of the backing off. There we go. Okay. So we've got our large panel. Now we're going to cover this skinny front piece with the same stars. So we're going to trim it to uh, seven eighths by four inches. So just a strip, seven eighths. By four inches. And tape that on. So again, our little front panel, our skinny front panel is seven eighths by four inches. Again, we're going to do my little butterfly tabs. And I want to line it up so that it fully, like there's no gap in there. You don't have to, but I want to line it up so that it looks like it's just one solid panel in there. There we go. Oh no, I lost my tab. So that works super well with this star pattern paper because there's, there's a gap. So it just looks like it's seamless there. There's like the, the pattern isn't broken up. You know what I mean? With the stars. It's not like you would know, 
you know, you would notice that if it, we were using the deer and there's half a deer head there, <laughs> then, you know, it changes. Anyways, okay, so I like the stars for that. Now we're going to trim our next panel back. We're going to trim a piece of our star paper to one and three eighths by three and seven eighths. So one and three eighths. One and three eighths by three and seven eighths. One and three eighths by three and seven eighths. I'm going to lay my card flat for working on these interior panels. So we've cut our middle panel there. We've cut the cardstock for it to one and three eighths by three and seven eighths. And stick that on. Again, leave in a nice even border. Here we go. Okay. Now we've got our back panel and we're going to trim the star paper to two and three eighths by three and seven eighths. Two and three eighths. Two and three eighths by three and seven eighths. And it'll fit just on our back panel there. So two and three eighths by three and seven eighths. Okay. Stick that on. How's everybody hanging in there? How do we feel about making it from scratch so far? I mean, it's a lot of measuring, but I think it's kind of cool. Scratch is good, says Carol. Okay, okay, we've got we've got Carol in the scratch from scratch corner with me. <laughs> It's fun. It gives it gives you a taste of making shape cards, right? Okay, there we go. Yeah, you're right. It's not difficult, right? As long as you have the measurements. I hope I'm going at an okay pace for you guys. As long as you have the measurements, it's it's not a Crazy concept, but it looks very impressive, doesn't it? Okay, so there, we've got our background pieces. It's starting to come together. Now, while we have that star cardstock, uh, we're gonna just trim up that star paper. We're going to trim up one more piece. Um, 
one more piece of it to two and one eighth by two and three eighths. So two and one eighth. Two and one eighth by two and three eighths. Two and one eighth by two and three eighths. And we're just going to set this piece aside because it's going to be for our little border for our sentiment. Okay. Oh, Brenda says throwback Thursday. <laughs> I think it's fun to see how it would be done without a die, right? Yeah. Sort of like reading a map rather than GPS, says Brenda. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It's good to have a sense of direction, right? <laughs> Keeps us sharp. Karen says she loves the idea for making it from scratch. You can turn it into so many different varieties. You're so right because, I mean, now because we're doing it ourselves, super duper easy to just flip those measurements around, have your panel over here, do different styles, right? You can easily customize it when you know how to do it from scratch. Okay. While we're trimming up papers, let's trim our text paper that we were using in our last card. I'm going to trim it up and throw that on our back panel. So we're gonna trim it too. Now make sure when you're trimming, you're trimming it correctly. So we're gonna go to make sure, you know, our font is right side up. Um, so make sure it's horizontal and then we're gonna trim uh, two and a quarter by three and three quarter. So two and a quarter by three and three quarters. So two and a quarter. By three and three quarters. Two and a quarter by three and three quarters. And that should give us a nice green border to make that holiday text pop. I love it. it uh, the, the words say, like it's nice, it's just a background. It's not, um, you know, like a sentiment, but you still get all of those nice kind of holiday words in. It says jingle bells, happy holidays, tis the season, walking in a winter wonderland, Santa Claus, festive hugs, let it snow. Peace, love, joy, warm wishes. It's, it's nice. Can you tell I really like this paper pad? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna attach this to our back panel. Oops, make sure you've got it right side up. And pop that on there. Make your little even dark green border. Come on, here we go. Okay. Now where are we at? Let's trim up a piece of our gold mirror cardstock. Okay. It's coming together. Coming together. So we're going to trim our gold mirror. Two. Two and five eighths by four and seven eighths. So we're trimming our gold mirror cardstock to two and five eighths. Two and five eighths by four and seven eighths. 
Okay. Now we're going to take this little chunk, which is going to fit here. We're going to emboss it. And if you have not embossed mirror paper before, oh my goodness, it just takes it to a whole other level. So make sure you're putting your um, mirror cardstock in properly into your embossing folder, right? We want to make sure the raised part of our embossing folder is on the back so that it pops up into the mirror. Right, so our raised part of our embossing folder is on the back. So it's popping up. And we're going to run this through our embossing machine. Here we go. Our die cutting and embossing machine. And I'm just using, this is the uh, Diamond Point Senna's 3D embossing folder from Creative Expressions. Brenda says she didn't need <laughs> she didn't need this embossing folder until she saw it and like right it's just lovely it makes it look so fancy okay it's perfect we're just going to attach that with some tape or glue. Yeah, embossing the mirror card is always impressive. Always impressive, I think. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna run an extra piece down the center because it's not all in contact because some of it's embossed and raised up and not sticking. Okay. So we're just going to pop that on our the the large panel. Okay. Oh, I can just hear the rain just started. I can hear it on our steel roof. Nice and relaxing. Okay. Look at that. All righty. Now with um, the mirror cardstock, we're also going to trim a little piece to two and a quarter by two and a half. I think this is enough. Yeah, awesome. Two and a quarter. Two and a half. So we're just starting our little sentiment backing. Okay, we're not gonna attach them yet though. Um, now from a scrap of white cardstock. Yeah, Brenda, I hope the wind isn't too bad. It was wild here. When was it? Last weekend, the end of last week, it's supposed to be windy, but we'll see. Okay, so from white cardstock, we're going to uh, trim it to two inches by two and a quarter inches. Two inches by two and a quarter inches. Mm 
think that's the last measured cut we're gonna do. Beautiful, put my cutter away. Okay, now we are going to stamp our little sentiment on here. Where's my stamp platform? There we go. So on that white card stock, we just trimmed our little two inches by two and a quarter inches. In the center, I'm going to stamp our season's greeting sentiment from our poinsettia stamp set. Try and get it kind of even. There we go. And I'm going to use that same um, rainforest, rainforest green from the Versatile Claire. Just matches this paper so perfectly. And a nice, like, rich Christmassy color. There we go. Clean that up. It away. Right. Now, uh, you don't have to, but I am going to take my inverted corner punch and punch the corners. This is our. Um, Hunky Dory inverted corner punch. And I'm just going to punch the corners of all of these pieces before I stack them together. We have a rounded corner punch. We have, and it just wedges in there and kind of makes them fancy. Same with my white piece. Easy peasy. There we go. But like I said, you don't have to. If you don't have a punch, just carry on without it. Now. I'm going to attach with my tape. These layers, but the gold layer, the largest gold layer on the back. Come on. And the white layer with our sentiment stamped on the front. Doesn't that look nice with just those inverted corners? Makes it look fancy. There we go. Again, done without a die, right? Okay. So now we're going to attach this to our middle panel, but I want to make sure, I mean, this is, I guess, is a personal preference, but I want to make sure I'm attaching it so that the season's greetings is visible even when it's closed. I just like it. So I'm going to attach my tape to the bottom at the back, just the bottom quarter to a third. Make sure it's really, I'm going to use a couple pieces to make sure it's on there nice and tight. And attach it to this back panel. Okay. 
in the center. And keep it straight, Kaylee. There we go. There. So it pops up a bit. Lovely, lovely. And you can still see it when it's closed. Okay. Now we're coming to the time, kind of last part. I mean, we've still got work to do, but <laughs> now we're going to just stamp our poinsettia and color it in. The last element for our card. Our from scratch card. All right, I'm going to grab some white card stock. And I'm going to be coloring my poinsettia with alcohol ink markers. But you can color it with whatever you want. Just make sure you're using appropriate ink for whatever coloring medium you're going to be doing. Um, so because I'm using alcohol markers, I'm going to use our memento ink. Now, we've done lots of alcohol marker coloring in these classes. So by now, you guys should know that I like to stamp first with my stamping platform. I keep my stamp mounted and I stamp first with my light gray. Um, this one's London Fog, but any light gray. I think gray flannel is another um, light gray one from Memento. Um, I like to stamp first with my light gray, color it in, um, and then stamp over top with my black. Because even though Memento does a really great job of not bleeding with the alcohol markers, it can still get a little fuzzy. And if we're stamping our outline with the black memento, that tends to show up more than if we stamp the outline first with our gray memento and color it up. You don't notice that light gray kind of little blurriness as much as you would a black. So, if you have a stamping platform and you want to try to stamp first with the light gray. Then we're going to leave the stamp mounted and we're going to get to coloring. So We'll be using some reds and browns and kind of like a goldy, goldy yellow. I really love these um, cultural creations stamps because they're so nice and wide open and give us room to color and add our own details. So I'm taking, I've got two reds. I have um, kind of a lighter red and a darker red. So I have 193 from our couture alcohol markers and 187 as my dark red. So again, I like to always do a little color swatch here just to see the difference. They're similar enough that um, it's gonna be nice to blend or to, to add kind of some of the veins and details in with the darker red. So I'm going to kind of wash my leaves with my lighter red first. Or my, not my leaves, my petals. So I'm gonna, I love the um, brush and for this task. For the larger areas to color in the brush works wonderfully. And if you feel like you need a little bit more control, um, you can always use the finer point tip as well. My goodness, I can't color and talk at the same time. <laughs> Okay. 
Just use a light touch with the alcohol markers. So you don't need, you don't want to soak the paper with the alcohol ink, right? I mean, I know I said we only had one thing left. <laughs> but I'm like, oh yeah, there's a ton of elements to, <laughs> to doing up these poinsettias. I'm gonna add some gold accents to it. Lots of detail, we're adding lots of detail to the petals once we get this first coat on. Now, because we're kind of just using uh, our markers to add more detail, I'm not worried about like in the past when we've done kind of like some shading and stuff, we wanted to keep working with the marker. So I would have done one petal at a time um, to keep the ink wet so that it's easy to blend the next color in. But because we're actually just wanting to use the darker color to add the veins in the leaves, not so much the shading. Um, I'm, I'm not really worried about keeping my, my uh, ink wet while I'm working with it. So that's why we can do kind of the full base um, at, at the same time, at once, instead of each petal individually. Okay, there's our first one done. And just keep going with the second one. Now, if we wanted, of course, we could add shading with this first red base color. Um, and by that, I mean maybe add an extra little layer on the interior, right? Like I just did. Do your base coat and then go over just the like inside part of the petal, just to darken that up if you want. You can try that. It's a great wide open stamp to practice shading on. Each petal you get another shot, right? Just to add that subtle, kind of um, gradient of red. And of course, the more coats you put on, the darker the color is going to go. To an extent, you don't want to do too many coats and then you kind of start to wear away at your paper. Um, it's another reason I like to use our uh, ecstasy crafts cardstock, especially for stamping. It's just a nice, smooth, like really great quality paper. So I never really have to worry about um, the paper degrading when I'm using my alcohol markers. Like you could find um, with, you know, some cheaper cardstocks.
So this is our last class of 2021, but we've already got plans for 2022. So I'm hoping we'll be back with our next class early in the new year. Already looking forward to them. Already planning projects. Can't wait to show you guys. I just um, sat in on a meeting to see some of the new product releases coming up early in 2022. And there's some really fun mixed media products coming out. Ooh, Carol, a Valentine's card is a great idea. Yeah, maybe we'll do something like that for one of our classes in the early new year. That'd be great. You could use it for Valentine's or anniversaries, that kind of thing. Um, but there's some really exciting stuff coming out in 2022, and I can't wait to play with it all with you guys. <laughs> okay, so I'm also going to color our berries red. Just give them a wash. You know what, I might switch to my finer tip for these. Oh, I'm, Anna, I'm so glad you're enjoying the classes. Brenda, I'm so glad. I really enjoy them too. I have, we have a lot of fun with them, don't we? Yeah, just a little bit more control with the finer tip of the markers, right? Okay, now I'm going to go in with my darker red with the fine tip and figure out what kind of way I'm picturing the light coming from on my poinsettias. Doesn't really matter. Just pick away. <laughs> and then I'm kind of going to just draw um, the darker red and just do a little like curve to make it look like there's a little bit of a shadow on those berries. And I'm just kind of going as if the light's coming from the top of my stamp. I have to commit to a direction, right? So that I continue with the light always coming from that direction. Just doing a little swoop across my berries. So we're adding a little depth to those. Kind of giving the illusion of that curve, right? There we go. Now I'm going to do the Oh, Anna, I love that idea, a virtual class as a fundraiser for her church. That's brilliant. Very cool. Okay, so now again, I'm going with my dark red and uh, just drawing on some veins in my petals. So I'm gonna kind of go like that down the center line and then like this on my petals, obviously. <laughs> so 
So what we're doing, show up on camera. It's quite obvious in person. Um, so I hope it, it, you know, obvious, but subtle, like it looks realistic and it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. So Anna's is saying that she's, <laughs> she's been inspired to do her card making classes virtually as well. Awesome. It's a lot of fun. And I mean, we have to get creative, right? In these times, it unfortunately, in my area anyways, does not look like we're going to be out of this back to normal anytime soon. So you might as well dive in to the virtual stuff, All right? It's important for us to still connect and craft together and have fun with friends, honestly, <laughs> okay? <laughs> And it's nice that um, we get to reach a wider audience too. I really like that. Like we've always done in-person classes, obviously not through COVID, um, but we've missed, we were missing such a large part of our customers by only doing them in person because so many of you don't live in our local area, right? Um, so it's awesome to be able to connect to even more of you. So I'm just continuing through, drawing those veins on. So I like that they didn't, uh, cultural creations left these leaves open. I think I already said that, but I like being able to add our own details. It's fun. Let's just get a little creative, right? With the stamping. Okay, on to number two. Put the stamping and coloring. Oh, Anna, Anna, so Anna's from the States. And she used to come all the way up to us in Canada in person <laughs> as a little mini vacation, she says. <laughs> Hopefully we can get back to that soon, right? It is always nice to see things in person. See the products, touch the paper. If you are local and tuning in to this virtual class, here's your reminder that we <laughs> are doing an in-store demo tomorrow from what is it from 10 until 12? We're making a little make and take card. Doing what we can. So we're actually raising money for the food bank. So if you're local and you want to come in between 10 and 12 tomorrow, bring a toonie or a non-perishable food item and you can make a little card with me. Okay, 
There we go. Look at that. That nice subtle detail we get with just the kind of different shades of red, right? Okay, now I'm going to color in my branches. One more one. Raspberry brown. Raspberry brown or storm beige. Let's go storm beige and then we'll shade with raspberry brown. Or, you know, add a little depth with the raspberry brown. So, with my fine tip, I'm just lightly going over my branches. And then what I'll do is go with my darker brown and just darken it up kind of like underneath as if the petals might be like shading the branches a bit. So just close to the center, I'll add a little more of that dark shade. go. So just finishing off the rest of those branches. With my lighter brown. Darker. Just add a little bit of shading. Just a little. And you can see here, I'm just doing, you know, a few branches at a time so that my ink is still wet. So that those lighter and darker shades just blend together a bit where they, where they meet. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to color our kind of berries, I guess, from the poinsettia with a nice kind of golden yellow. This is the middle yellow from Couture. So I'm gonna do one at a time, color those balls. And then while the ink is still wet, I'm gonna go with my lightest red and just do a dot, keeping in mind where I think my light is coming from, or I pictured my light coming from, and just doing a red dot kind of from the point where the light would be hitting. Just to add a little something, something in there. And again, for my next one, and just a little dot. So it kind of bleeds a bit, the red into the yellow, just a little, adds something a little cool. Okay, now what's left to do? Oh, right. We want to add our gold accents. So I you can absolutely use a gel pen if you want. Um, I am going to use my um, gold, my gold alcohol ink and a little fine tip applicator. Uh, they're called the blending tips. They're just really fine and we can just put them on there. So I'm just taking the scrap of plastic to um, use as kind of my craft mat. Because I tend to, with alcohol inks, I tend to um, use something disposable just because I don't want to mess around cleaning up the big mess and everything on my craft mat. Um, 
So just a little scrap of plastic packaging works. So with the gold alcohol ink, this is the alcohol ink pearl in gold from Kutcher Creations. If you want to shake it really well, uh, I think you can hear the ball rolling around in there, but you just want to make sure you get all of that gold mixed up into the liquid. It kind of settles at the bottom after a while. So then I'm going to put some dots there and play around with it. You can either use the fine kind of brush tip with this applicator, uh, but that does make it really quite fine. I don't know if you can see it. Um, so what I like to do is actually use the opposite tip and it's just does a nice line. Nice thickness. So I'm going to go in and again, keeping in mind where my light is going to be hitting, just add some highlights. So I'm going to do highlight on my berries. Picking up more of that alcohol ink as I go. Make sure you don't add too much at once. It's always easier to go back and make your dot a little bigger if you need to. But remember, it's also nature, right? The poinsettia. So there's going to be variation. Don't worry, they don't all have to be absolutely the same size. It just adds such a nice coat of gold. It can be hard to find, um, you know, a gold gel pen that does such a nice job for highlighting that's like thick and nice all the way through. So there we've added the gold to our berries and I'm actually going to go and add gold to our center, the yellow center pieces, kind of just beside my red dots so that they still poke through and behind. Again, keeping in mind where the light's coming from. And I'm going to add some swipes onto the petals to really bring it to life. So just kind of following the same pattern we did with our darker red. Um, and I'm just going to add them here and there. And I like to kind of start from the center and swipe out because the little applicator doesn't hold a lot of ink. So you can see it starts larger and goes skinnier. And I like that. Just kind of flick it out. There we go, got the one done up. And last, last. It's really turned into quite a festive looking poinsettia. Last couple petals. Yep. 
There we go. Look at that. Okay. Now let's remember we're going to restamp with our black ink. So just bring that poinsettia back to life. Make sure we have it lined up again properly. Our ink should be dry by now. I'm going to apply my black memento ink. And stamp it off. Bring those details back to life. And look at that, the black. Stamping in the black just finishes it off, makes those uh, outlines nice and crisp. Okay. There we go. Now we are going to mount this on to a piece of white, another piece of white cardstock. You don't have to do this, uh, but we're going to cut it out and part of our poinsettia is going to be sticking out over the edge to give us lots of dimension. Um, so you will see the kind of um, alcohol markers coming through. So what we're going to do is just layer on another piece of white uh, paper. It doesn't have to be um, thick at all. You can use a thin paper if you want. It, make, it does make it a little easier for cutting if you want to do that. So I'm actually going to use a scrap from our, um, from our paper pad. So it's a nice, it's thinner than my regular white cardstock. So I'm going to put it on there. And just applying tape kind of where I see the image coming out and through. I don't really want to have to cut through the tape, but I do want it to be fairly close to the edge so that I know my, uh, my poinsettia is going to stay stuck down to the backing. So this just helps to finish it off a bit. That's all. We want to look good from head to toe, right? <laughs> So sticking that down there. So it's just a nice flat white backing. I mean, you could absolutely make it a pattern on the back. I don't see why not if you wanted. Uh, but I'm having mine flat white. And then we're just going to go in and fussy cut around our poinsettia. Now I'm not going to get um, too crazy here with the, uh, like I want it to look nice and neat, but I'm not gonna worry about getting way up close and having perfect edges because we're gonna do a little cheat kind of trick. And we're going to add actually a little bit of um, Distress Oxide ink. We're gonna blend it in when we're done. So it's gonna kind of camouflage our background a bit. Get rid of the bulk of that. Just cut these out. Again, we want it to be nice and smooth and follow the, follow the lines of the stamp, um, but I'm not going into crazy detail with this.
just cutting along even a little bit of an edge so that I don't have to worry. Give me a little bit of a white border. And we're just going to ink that up when we're done. And it's kind of going to just help to kind of blur away any uneven, uneven borders. If you have the patience to go <laughs> into great detail with fussy cutting, by all means, have at it. Uh, but that's just not me. There we go. That's a little bit. Now, if we find our backing is kind of peeling away in some areas because we didn't take the tape right to the edge, now could be the time when you add any extra adhesive to you know, these little twigs that we want to make sure stay tacked down to the backing. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of glue and make sure everything's nice and tidy to our backing. Just on the pieces that are kind of sticking out more. Not bad. Okay. Now on our edges, I'm taking my Distress Oxide in Vintage Photo, but you, do, you can take any kind of light brown color. And I mean, really, any kind of applicator you want. I like using these, um, uh, I guess, kind of felt pads to do this kind of effect on. So we are just going to grab, I just like to have a little scrap of paper. We're gonna grab up some of our distress oxide and we're just gonna take it on to the edge of our poinsettia. We're not going to go all the way in. We're just going to add to the edge to kind of blend away that stark white edge. And it just masks it a little bit. So just lightly applying that onto the, the white areas, the background areas of our stamp. We can take it all the way in, even to like in here, because it's just going over our nice um red and brown twigs so it just adds i think i think it adds a little even more depth to our stamped image right there we go just continue along the edges with that and it kind of you see what i mean by we're just hiding any unevenness in our kind of stark white border that would stick out like a sore thumb. We're just blending it in. So it looks like the shape that it we cut it to, that we fussy cut it to, is the shape that it's supposed to be. 
I like to have my edges a little darker so it just finishes that paper off. There we go. Lovely. All right. All that's left to do is attach it. So you can attach it with glue. You can attach it with um, foam tape if you want. I'm going to use a little bit of glue for mine. Now, do be mindful this stamp will fit at an angle just within the five by seven border. If you turn it, don't have it straight. Well, you can, again, do whatever you want. <laughs> but uh, to fit it within the five by seven envelope, we wanna make sure we've tilted it so that it's just within the, the five by seven. So we're gonna have this piece hanging out over top. So that's why we've finished off our backing. So with a little bit of glue, we just want to apply our glue to the portion that's going to be behind the backing. So kind of here over. Otherwise, we'll just have glue over that nice freshly backed stamp. So again, double check. We've got it in the right spot. And from here over. Come on. And I'm using my Helmar glue again um, because I'm gluing it to the mirror card stock, uh, the embossed mirror card stock at that. Um, I find this Helmar glue just kind of fills in the gaps and gives us good contact. Holds everything down nicely. There we have it our pointed oh my goodness let's add some stars on that front corner some star sequins we might as well put them right here we'll do three again right as well just onto the corner of that front panel There we go. Lovely, lovely. So that does it. A little, a little longer <laughs> than our um, our first card that we made with our die, um, but very special and lovely and I think it's a lot of fun. Woo, there we go. All done up. And then of course our building block card. Yee. Thanks so much for coming out guys. I'm looking over here because I'm trying to read all your comments. 
Yay, awesome. Um, love it, love it. I hope everyone has a great Christmas. Oh, I said I would show you the rest of those shape dies. Let me do that quick. I want to show you. For those of you that prefer the dies, we just got um, these new ones in. I had them on my desk from showing off. All kinds of different shapes. So look at this one again, just cutting out and pasting on how easy peasy to create something super duper kind of elaborate, right? An oval one, it'll be like a little rocking card. And this one with the circles, I think is so cool. I don't think I could attempt doing that one from scratch. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, now I hope you all have a great holiday, however you're celebrating it. I hope you have a wonderful, safe, healthy new year, and uh, we will catch you for the next virtual class in 2022. Um, thanks so much for joining me. Again, if you wanted to shop any of the stuff that we used today in class, you can find it all on our website at xccrafts.com. Under the inspiration tab, you'll see our building block and points at a step card link there if you wanted it. Okay, guys, have a wonderful rest of your afternoon, and I will catch you next time. Until then, happy crafting. Bye.